right, let's preach. Deuteronomy chapter number 8 from verse 11 to 19. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 19. Here's what it says. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply. Can I just preach for a second? Does anybody notice here that he's actually saying when you have, not if you have. So he says when you have eaten and are full, which means you will eat and you will be full. He says when you have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, which means you will build beautiful houses. Okay, is somebody alive this morning? You will dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up, this is where the issue is now, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, in which were fairy serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do to you good in the end, that you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he saw to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that you shall surely perish. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are getting to the final stretch of our year of wisdom. So today we want to talk about money. Okay? Somebody's heart just went like this. We want to talk about money today. And so I'm going to talk about financial wisdom this morning. Financial wisdom. Uh, hopefully in, in, in October, the Wednesdays, I can try to do the proper series. But I'm just going to try to condense everything into this one message this morning. And money is a, is a big deal. It's a big deal for so many people, even people who don't want to acknowledge that it is. Half of the time, they are thinking about money. They're thinking about money. And uh, it, it's, so, it's so serious that, you know, back when I used to listen to secular music, I've, I've stopped for a while now, for a long time, not many years now. Uh, but when I, I used to actively listen to secular music, I used to, I used to like a guy called Nice. And that's because he used to sing in my dialect and he used a lot of proverbs that were very punchy and very deep. Okay, so I, I like to listen to him a lot. And then one time he invited somebody to, to collaborate with him. They do collabos where you invite an artist. And the artist was singing this chorus that, you know, stuck, it has stuck with me since then because of how erroneous it is. So essentially what he was saying was this. He was singing it in Igbo language, which I understand a little bit of because of my, my service here. And all he was saying essentially was, after God in my life, now money be second in command. Which means after God in my life, money is second in command. And I know that the only reason why he said second in command is so that it would be acceptable. What he actually meant to say was that money is the biggest deal in my life. <laughs> that's a problem. But for many people, including believers, that's the state of their heart. The only reason why God is still first in command is because the pastor will say something is wrong if I, if I say that money is the first in command. <laughs> but in their hearts and the way that they go about their lives, Money is actually first in command. We can't afford to live that way. That's a big problem. And that's what we want to try to address. Because a lot of people see money this way. And money can become a god. If you allow money, it will become a god. And the way that it becomes a god is if you idolize it and glorify it, then it has become a god to you. You know how you glorify money? When you can't say two things without mentioning the issue of money. When every time God tells you to do something, the first thing that comes to your mind is money. How are we going to afford this? Where every time that anybody wants to do anything, the way that you decide what to do and what not to do is how much am I going to get out of it? The way you decide which job to take and which one not to take is how much are they going to pay me? Are you with me this morning? You are idolizing money. You are glorifying it. You are giving it a place that it should not have. Now, money is important. It's not, it's not one of those things that you can say, oh, the money is not important. No, no, the scripture talks about that. It tells us that money answers all things. So money is important, but it has a place. And until you recognize that place 
you will continue to run after it. Because the thing about money is that the, the people who are chasing it are the ones who never get it. Luke chapter number 16. Let's look at what the scripture says about this. Luke chapter 16 from verse 10 to 15. The New Living Translation. It says, if you are faithful in little things. Now, the context of this chapter is money. So when he's saying little things, he's talking about money. You can go home and read the whole thing. You will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. This is the issue with money. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. The Pharisees who dearly loved their money. How many people love their money in the room this morning? Now you, are, you, are, you, you will never walk alone. Now you have abandoned me. But you know that this expression has come out of the mouths of so many believers. Oh, I love my money. Oh, no, no, no. Don't mess with my money. And when they say those things, they think they, think they are saying something good. Yeah, but it says the Pharisees dearly love their money. They heard all this and scoffed at him. So as I'm saying, saying I'm like, <clears throat> please, leave that one, please. That's why we came. Like somebody told me I didn't come to Canada to look at the sky train. I was in Vancouver. I came here to make money. <laughs> because you look at the sky train. Then he said to them, you like to appear righteous in public, but God knows your heart. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. Look at what he's saying. Do you know how, how, now this is how you will know whether you are idolizing money. How do you treat people who are wealthy? Because many times we look at things and we, when we read scripture like this, we're like, ah, no, that's for them. That's for, where's my wife? She's not here. That message is for her. But the truth of the matter is, if you think about it properly, many times we, we lift up when we hear that somebody, you see someone, you say, oh, like, you know, like the other day they were showing this, this thing about, uh, they were showing one, 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 you know, all these all this, um, realtors, they are, the realtors have more money than us that are buying the house from them, okay? So this, this fellow is a realtor, so he has houses everywhere. So he was bringing his, his wife to be to the house where they were showing, and, and the whole idea of it was the, the, the woman started to treat him in a certain way the minute they drove into the, the driveway. You could just see the change. The minute they entered the driveway and she saw the house, the, the whole counting has just changed. Like, ah, so this is your house. Oh, oh. There is, there is, it, it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. And that's why I'm always trying to teach you that, you see, your heart has to be fixed on God. In this life, if your heart is not fixed on God, you will be exposed. Because sometimes you can, you can say things with your mouth, but when you see something that, just like when I'm driving with Joseph and he sees Corvettes, his, his, his head will just turn like this. Now I'll, I'll carry his head and say, face your front. You're not buying a car until you buy a house. That is one of the rules that I give to every, every son or daughter of mine. Yeah? You are not allowed to go and buy a fancy car until you do what? I know you won't say it. I know you won't say it. Now, if you look at another translation of the, of the Bible, it talks about money here as mammon. I want to explain to you what that word means because I've heard so many interpretations of it. And this is what I don't want us to do. Don't base what you, what you know about something on what you have heard repeatedly. You need to look into the book. I will not come here and tell you something, you know, without checking it. I will go into the books and look at it and see the meaning of it. All right? So this word mammon comes from the, the, the root word mammonas. And here is what it means. I will read it to you. Just listen carefully. It means confidence. This is the first meaning of the word. It means confidence. That is, i.e., wealth, personified, deified. So, you know, you hear, when you hear mammon, you hear, they, they tell you that mammon is a spirit. Have you ever heard that before? This is the meaning of the word mammon. <laughs> it is a common Aramaic word for riches. It is akin to a Hebrew word which signifies to be firm, steadfast. That which is to be trusted. I'll repeat it again. Confidence. That is wealth, personified, deified. So that's what we're talking about when something is glorified. It is a common Aramaic word for riches. That's what it means. 
But that riches is when you are firm and steadfast in that, in that where your, your, your foot is, is in that riches. Where your confidence lies is where it is, right? And when you hear people talk and they can't tell you three things without telling you the amount of equity they have in their house. Are you guys with me? Or am I going to... Am I already checking tables this morning? Okay. I'm still coming for a lot of other things. Though. All right? So, it's talking about that which is to be trusted. Right? What is to be trusted. And it is personified, it says, in Matthew 6, verse 24, Luke 16, verse 9, that, that part that we are reading. So, when it comes to money, you cannot be under the world system, which is mammon, and be under the God system at the same time, under the kingdom system. It's either good or evil. You cannot serve God and, and, and serve mammonas. So you either choose the system of the world, which is you cannot trust God and also trust the system of the world. Your trust has to be in one place. You cannot have confidence in how much your stocks have appreciated. Let me paint the picture to you because you are looking at me like saints of God. So let me paint the picture to you. Do you know that if, for instance, you are, let's say, as I'm, as I'm here now, if this is the confidence thing now, confidence. As I'm here now, you can't notice anything has changed about me. But do you know that, just naturally speaking now, but me, I've, I'm training myself that I don't give away anything with my, just by, you know, something good happens to me, then I'm, I'm look, I can, have, I can have one million in my account, right? Right now, one million dollars in my account. And I will come to church and you will not know that anything has happened to me. My wife will know, but you will not know. I'm training myself to be that way. Because if, if, let's say, somebody, as I was here yesterday now, uh, one rich man, these are the things that I imagine, just comes and parks his escalade outside there and says, are you the pastor of this church? Please come into my car. And he says, and I say, well, what do you really need to get this work to the next level? The Lord's been speaking to me. What do you really need? He says, I, maybe, you know, come on, I need one million. And he just writes the check of one million on the thing and says, go, go, go and cash this, okay? And please, please don't, don't mention my name. I'm just an anonymous donor. I don't want any praise, okay? I said, ah, thank you, sir. And, uh, do you know that if I come to church today, like, if I'm just a normal canal person, huh, I'll be floating. You will know that something has happened. Because as I come in, you'll be like, ah, what happened to pastor? Because I'll be talking to everybody anyhow. I'll just be like, what are you doing? Move there, move there. This computer, we got to change this computer. Let's change it. And you'll be looking at me as if, ah, pastor, we should, <laughs> we should change everything. <laughs> Why are we changing everything? Because I know something you don't know. But what, what that is telling me is that my confidence is in that money that is in the account. It's not in the God that I'm serving. So what am I saying to you? Every day you should walk as if you are floating. Because your confidence should not be in how much your balance is. I know your account is minus 300 right now. You said, I know, I saw it. I know. That right now, as we're talking, it's minus 300. <laughs> you are depending on overdraft for this month. But I'm telling you that as a child of God, your confidence, which is, where is my trust? Where is my trust? Cannot be in that bank account. It cannot be there. Because I'm telling you, there's no, there's no situation that you are in right now. I always say this. My wife doesn't like me saying it, but it's a testimony. That when I first came to this country, the first job that I did, last year, all the, I looked at the taxes that I paid to the government of Canada. Taxes that I paid is more than my annual salary of my first job in Canada. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's more than what? The annual, <laughs> annual salary of the first job that I did in this country. Yeah. That's what I paid as taxes last year. So I'm telling you that there's nothing that you are trying to reach for today that you will not get to. I'm telling you, there's nothing. It is, you need to just stay with God and walk with his timing. Let your trust and your confidence, let it sit in God. Okay? So what I want to do today is just to share with you the principles that we live by. I can't share everything with you, but I will share three of them. So let's, let's build this up a little bit. Because you cannot be among the people that honor the things that the world honors. Uh, which means that your life does not consist in the abundance of what you have. And that means whether you have or you don't have. I'm saying both ways. Your confidence remains in God. Luke chapter number 12 verse 15. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Glory to God. So let's talk about the ideas. Point number one, I want to talk to you about just three simple things to try to live by. If you can pattern your life after these simple things, it's just 
simple things and say, I'm not going to do anything outside of this. Begin with these ones. You will see your life, when it comes to money now, when it comes to finances, you will just see your life going upward and forward. Upward and forward. And the first idea is this. We need to put God first. When it comes to money, we put God first because he is first. And nothing is second in command. Nothing. Not even money. Nothing is second in command to God. So we put him first. Because money is a trust. The owner of the universe, he gives it to us part time to manage it. We are stewards of the resources. I know you are the one that went and worked 14 hours shifts. But I'm telling you that it is him that gave you power to get wealth. So you have to understand that you are in trust of that. Psalm 24 from verse 1 to 2. Psalm 24, 1 to 2. It says, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. So there's nothing we own that does not belong to God. It doesn't belong to us. And we read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 earlier on. We will remember the Lord our God is the one that gives us power to get well. Agai 2, verse 8. It says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord. Because when it comes to money, money is not evil. It is the love of it that is wrong. Yeah, because we, you hear a lot of people quoting things and say money is the root of all evil. The scripture doesn't say that. First Timothy 6 verse 10. It says, for the love of money. So what does it mean? Showing affection for money. Glorifying money. Money is a tool. It's not your master. So, so you don't glorify it. You, you don't prioritize money over values. You don't prioritize money over people. You don't prioritize money over God or over things, you know, over the things of God. No, that's not the idea. So it's the other way around. Because money doesn't, in itself, doesn't have any character. It takes on the character of the person that has it. So, so we, we, we just have to look at it. You say, oh, that guy, when he, he became rich, money just changed him. Money doesn't have that capacity. No. What money does is that it amplifies whatever is already in the life of that person. And it goes both ways. So everything I'm saying, remember this. When somebody becomes wealthy and it starts to act somehow, it's the same way too when somebody becomes broke. It's abounding and abasing. When he becomes broke and he's grumpy, the only time you are ever happy is when you have money. Something is wrong with you. Yeah. So the only time we can see you happy and excited is when you are in the mall. And there's money to shop. Yeah. Or when you are in the plane and you are traveling, you're on vacation. That's the only time you are ever happy. There's something is wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. It's about your trust. It's about the heart. It's about confidence. Please give me the key. Let me, let me not disgrace myself, but I'll try. Give me the guitar. Let me try. I want, to, I want to show you something. I hope you don't forget this. So you see this guitar. is one of those guitars that you can play by itself. And the person that's supposed to be playing this guitar is at home now watching. But he has refused to come. No, it's Shakara. I can't play it. Let me just tell you. It's just Shakara. So, so here's the thing. You see, I'm playing this thing now. Huh? You can hear it at a certain level. But this guitar, I believe we can also plug it in, right? Give me, give me the club. So let me, let me just show you what this guitar by itself. Where is it? Everything I'm playing is fake. Oh. This thing fits me. I should learn this stuff. Okay, this thing is taking forever. You, should I forget about this illustration? All right. Thank you. Please don't blow our eardrums in. Okay, so. I can't hear it. Can you hear it? It's coming out from the speakers now. Okay, so what's going on? What's going on is that this thing, this cable that they just put in now, is connected to an amplifier. That's why you can hear it from the speakers. There's, the, the amplifier doesn't have any character. It only amplifies to you whatever I'm doing here. So as I'm playing rubbish, what is coming out of there is what? It's rubbish. If you bring somebody who can actually play the thing. Huh? See the rubbish I'm playing? It's just rubbish that we're coming out. There's nothing I can do. The only way that I can change what the amplifier is doing is to change the person that is playing this thing. So it's the same way with money. Money is that amplifier. So 
So you can say, oh, oh, money changed him or money, you know, did one thing. No, 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 no. Money doesn't have the capacity or the power to do that. It is there. It's static. It will take on the nature of the person, the character traits of the person that you give that money to. And that's what God is after. He's after the state of your heart, where you are at the moment. And what is it that if he releases certain things to your hand, what will become of you? That's why I'm telling you this thing that I just said to you is the reason why some of you don't have what you are praying for yet. God is preserving you. Because he knows that, what, just like I always tell the guys when we do um, church, when we look at we have to tell them that, you see, the reason why I'm not in a hurry to, you know, do certain things with our live streaming or whatever is that we can only amplify and project what we are. We need to get things right first before we start projecting things. If we go now on YouTube, so we, start, we start advertising on YouTube. The, what you're advertising is whatever you have. If what you are advertising is the rubbish that I was playing just now, that's what you are going to be projecting. It's the same thing with money. So don't ever think of money as something that is bad or something that is evil. And I know that if you come from a background where maybe you didn't have all of the things that you want, you know, or your parents, you know, suffered and struggled through things, you have the tendency to look at people that have a lot and look at them in a negative light. So all those rich kids, they are spoiled. When you start talking like that, you are offended. You are offended. And it's not a joke. You are actually offended. Something is wrong. So we need to fix that. So it's not those rich people. You see people on the road with boats behind their car. They, they have a truck and they put boats behind. The, <laughs> Better don't, don't be angry with them. Your pastor will join them soon, very soon. <laughs> because I did not come here to suffer in my life. I did not. I did not. I will have a big truck, big GMC truck that will be attached to my boat so that I can go to the water, put the boat, park the truck, go on board. Boat, boat. That's why they made life I can actually swim. Yeah, but that's why they made life jackets. Uh -huh. so I'll be on the boat. Ah, and I'll be there. Because I didn't come to suffer in my life. Oh. And you must have the same mindset. So don't be angry with them. Don't be angry. Look, when you see such things, huh, you need to understand that whatever you can find in the word of God, you can have it. The problem is, can God trust you with it? If as you are going with that boat now, you are going to the... Like we were watching... Uh, uh, what was it? With Victory Tongue, we were watching that. God told one of the pastors, Rick, to go and sew his bike, his Ali Davidson that he just bought. So when they showed the picture of the bike, I knew that only the people who know, you know, is who know, <laughs> that know that, ah, boy, boy, you cannot sell this bike. No. <laughs> because that, the blue color of the bike is the only one that Ali Davidson made that year. And he brought it. Ah, I said, God, it is well. Oh. It is well. Because that's how you will know the, what is in your heart. So the, the goal of it is God is going to bless you. You, you saw those scriptures I read. You will live in houses you did not build. You both the ones you built. You will live in it. Beautiful houses. You will have fine cars. Some of you will have plane, aeroplane. As I'm saying it now, you don't believe. But I'm saying to you that in your future is there. The, pro the point is, can God trust you with a private jet? Or is it just going to be vacation, 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 every vacation? <laughs> what is it? That if a, if a, if a, a pastor comes and says he, he has a crusade in Guatemala, that he wants to go and do, and there's no flights that go there, you know, and he wants to, he wants to get a plane to go, because people don't understand that this is why people have these things, and he wants to go there. Will you go and check your own calendar first and say, ah, wait, 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 let me check. Oh, ah, we have vacation now. Vacation is booked for that week. Can you move your crusade? That's how you know what your priority is. Priority is, yeah. I know some of you, as I'm saying this thing about plane, I say, Pastor, let's start with car first. All I'm believing God for is car <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's the same thing, because either is faithful in a little will be set over much. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. Can God trust you with that car? If he gives you a car now, and we say, okay, when you are coming every morning, go and pick up four people and bring them to church. You, I know you will smile when I tell you, but as you are going, I didn't want to pay my car payment. That's how we know. That's, it's just the state of the heart that will be revealed. So it's, it's what is, the, what is the, the, the motive? What is the goal? Glory to God. So let's move on. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. I just needed to stress that a little bit. First John chapter 5, verse 21. It says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. So how do we put God first that we are saying concerning money? It's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. This is how we put God first. It says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Other translations, let me show you, Living Bible. It says, don't be conceited, sure of your own wisdom. 
Instead, trust and reverence the Lord and turn your back on evil. When you do that, then you will be given renewed health and vitality. Then he says, honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. And it will fill your bands with wheat and barley and overflow your, your wine vats with the finest wines. Amplified Classic says, honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors. I love this righteous labors because you cannot go and go and do defraud somebody of their money. One day I'll talk about all those scammers. Have you noticed how many phone calls you get now huh? from scammers? This is this is the this is the IRS. And the other day I was with my boys outside. We were we were trying to we are trying to do the shed, and the phone call came in. I don't even know when I said this is just programmed into me because it's not a lie. It's, it's who I am. So as the, the guy just called and said, "This is the anti fraud center. There's a transaction on your account." I said, "You are talking to the police." He just clicked. <laughs> he just hung up. <laughs> I felt uh, familiar and I'm like, I want you that. Why, why is daddy saying that? <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, it's getting so much, so much nowadays. And you're just like, ah, what is really going on? And people get scammed of all this. Please, don't, don't bring tight to this house if you went to scam somebody. That tight will make sure that they catch you. I'm telling you, I promise you that because... I have a covenant of integrity over this house. So you go anywhere, you, you want to lie to your parents. That you, need, you know, in, in, back in school, that's what we used to do, we used to lie to our parents that we want textbook. There's no textbook. We'll come up with the name of the textbook. If they give us, if they say the, the, the book is, uh, we'll say, you're Ababio, we'll separate the names. We'll say, you is one book, Ababio is the second one. <laughs> then we'll collect the money. Don't bring tight of that money he named me. If you bring it there, they will catch you. I'm just telling you. So when you're in your office, you do things with integrity. It's not, you are, we are not in a hurry to, to get anything. Yeah, you do things with integrity, and then you can honor God from that, all right? So let's move on. Let me just move to the second point. Number two point that I want to, to, to stay with you. Try to live by these principles. Number two, live within your means. You have heard this so many times, but it's time to actually start living by it. Live within your means. Live within what you earn. In this society, it is so easy to live on credit. It is so easy, super easy. It's so easy. If I was, I was telling somebody at work yesterday that they were showing one ad, you know, and you must have seen it. On the, you say, give yourself some credit. I'm like, they're supposed to ban this ad. Because it's pretty much like saying, give yourself... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. They, they won't call it debt. Because if they say debt, it even sounds like dying. So they won't call it debt. They, they want to make it sound like something that is good, but it's a trap. So you say, give yourself, it's like saying, drink, 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 and go and drive. And you are advertising that on TV. That's exactly what it is. So, so this society, it can make you think that when you come and they say, oh, you can't even park. I remember then when we first came and I was trying to park cars in Vancouver and they say, you have to have credit card. And I was determined that I won't have credit card in this country. But they say, you can't survive without it. All. So I went to collect 500. That's how you will start, 500. Then they will, be, they will be calling you by themselves. You have been so faithful in a little. You are now going to be set over much. Now we want to increase your limits. To, they are increasing your trap. The hole is, going, is getting deeper. And, and the foolishness of it is that some people will carry that card and go and shop on it. Look, if you are in this church and you are doing vacation on credit card, I bind that spirit. Oh. I bind it. No, no, I'm telling you the truth because you cannot... Look, listen, if you want to... I'm not saying vacation is bad. Please don't hear me wrong. I'm saying... You have to earn it. You have to earn what you are doing. So you, you, don't, you are not you know, going to do something because everybody is doing it. And don't look at anybody. Look, you don't know how much people are making. No? You don't what? You don't know. <laughs> so don't be deceived by, you know, just, uh, you just wear one small sneakers and t-shirt and come. The people who dress coded the most are the ones that have the most money. I'm telling you because they don't really care too much. Huh? So don't, don't get carried away by that. Somebody else might be doing it because they can afford to. You must live within your own means. Live within what you make. This credit system is a game. A game that they are playing. If you don't know the rules, you are the ones that will be the victim. They will be using your own money to fund the people that know the rules of the game. It's like getting on a soccer field. You don't know what the rules are. You don't know where we are going to score. You don't know anything. Like my son, Demilade, he doesn't know anything about the rules. So when me and Femidara and Demilade are trying to play soccer, all he wants to do is kick the ball. And he's not going to, the, to one person's post. He's, not going, he's just kicking the ball anyhow. That's what people do with, with credit cards. They just take the thing, go everywhere. Now iPhone 15 has come out. Your body's shaking. 
iPhone 15, iPhone 15, iPhone 15. Yet that company is a trillion, three trillion dollar company. Where is your own company? Where is your own company? But you pride yourself as the Apple guy. You have every latest Apple device that comes out. Now, your Apple Watch now is no more enough. Now, I want Apple Watch Ultra. Ultra. When was the last time you went to Iken? We don't know. But you want Apple Watch Ultra. So that anybody can see that you are the Apple guy, but you are broke. It, it's, this is financial wisdom. It's time to be wise. So you stay within what you can afford. And the good thing about this society is that there's nothing... Look, like as we are in church now, you can... Here is not the kind of place where you come, and if you don't have this hat that is disturbing everybody's head, we will not recognize you. You can wear what you have and show up in church. Nobody's putting you under any pressure. This is what I told you at the beginning, and this is not a joke. I'm not the kind of pastor that if you bring a big car, I will, I will pray for the car differently from if you bring a small car. I'm not that kind of pastor. I know pastors like that. Yeah, that are. Ah, when the person brings the, the proper car, they will open the book. They will, they will come on the pulpit and talk about that one. But when other people bring smaller cars, it's like, is this all you can do? They won't say it, but in their face, it's like, ah, oh boy, this guy is... <laughs> this, my own principle, and this is what I preach even to my own siblings. I told my younger brother, he's in the UK now. I told him, I said, don't let me hear that you went and you went and financed one car. The day you tell me that you have, you have gotten the key of your house, look, if you want to buy a Range Rover after that, I will, I will personally co-sign with you. But you must have an asset. Not, don't go around just trying to do So he went and bought one, you know, he told me it's a 1996 model. I said, good. As long as it's cash, you paid for it. And you collected the key. Because sometimes it's just about, we want to look, you know, a certain way to other people. We want everything to be. And you don't understand how the system operates. How things work here. Please, guys, this is very, very important. This is, this is not a joke at all. And trust me, I promise you this. You will not hear me talk about you in a, in a certain way because you don't have things. I've passed that level. I have passed that level. I'm not that guy. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, look, you can, you can have anything you want to have. I will not, because of that, you know, make, make you anything that is not, you get what I'm talking about. So this is not that church. This is not the place. You, you walk at your own pace. The pace that God has granted you, do what you can do. When we got to this country, we went and bought a $1,000 car from Craigslist. Craigslist is the equivalent of Kijiji. Yeah. 1,000. I've told the story so many times, but you need to hear it. Some of you have never heard the story. What? Sorry, dear, I'm going to repeat the story. You will hear the story as long as this ministry exists. So, as I got the car home for the first time, first time, the $1,000 car, it was like 170-something thousand miles on the car. Who cares? So, what I used to do is I used to change the reader. I'm giving you expo now if you don't know. You can change the thing on your car so that anybody that enters your car cannot see the mileage. All they see is the trip. Yeah, trip. It's not their business. How many miles are you on your car? So I was driving the car, and I brought it home. My wife came. I wanted to park the car. As she was parking the car, she entered the fire hydrant. You know the fire hydrant in front of the house? It tore the entire door of the car. First day. First day. Tore the whole thing like this. And she came out and said, <laughs> I said, I know what that was done. <laughs> I don't know where the grace came from. I didn't even get angry or anything. I think you were pregnant then or something, right? I didn't really get upset or anything. I was just like, wow, wonderful. We drove that car like that for one whole year. Oh, yes. So what I did was I just painted around it, you know, where the, the thing had become like metal. You know, when it peels, there's, it, I painted around it. There was the hole was there. So as I'm driving, people will be looking at me. <laughs> In my mind, if you don't like it, just come and replace it for me. Because I wanted to go and fix it. They said $600 to fix a door of a car I bought for $1,000. I drove it like that for one year. This was, let, me, let me put it in context for you. This was a church where my mates in the church were buying Toyota Highlander at that time. Brand new, seven-seater vans. At that time, I drove it like that for one whole year. That, no, 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 no devil, you cannot push me up beyond my time. No, I will do it when I'm ready. When I'm ready. Not, not because of pressure. Or because, so don't look at anybody and say, oh, ah, but they have... Forget all that, guys. You face your own and stay with your own. Stay with your own. In your own, in your, in, it says it makes all things beautiful in its time, in its time. When that time is ripe, man, you will just see things working for you, and people will not be saying, ah, how come everything is working? It's because they were, they were patient. They walked with God in their own time. So please, guys, don't put yourself under any pressure. Don't get into, you know, using debt to finance your life. Where everything, look, try it, try it. Try and save like 500. Just try this, eh? and see, you will never go back to credit card again. Try it. Put it in an account, and forget about your credit card. 
and start using that fiber. You will see that your brain will reset. Yeah, try it. Your brain will reset. You will start thinking about everything you want to buy. Because you think credit card is free money. It's not free money. There's no free money in this country. Should I preach this morning? You guys are looking very... Should I preach? The free money does not exist in Canada. Uh, you, you, your tax return, you say, my, as I'm saying, I think about my tax return is free money. You paid. Uh, you got tax return, you say, ah, but they just gave me 2000 Nobody gives you anything. Dude, you paid. <laughs> the reason why they gave you that is because that's what they can, they can forego. Like, yeah, you paid too much. Let's just give you back some of it. <laughs> yeah, let's give you back some of it so that you will not be angry. <laughs> so they use that one to shock your mouth so that you can keep quiet. <laughs> I gotta keep quiet. Don't be angry that they collected all your money. But if you look at how much you actually paid in taxes, you'll be shocked. So there is nothing exist. So they give you a credit card. It's a test. Just like what God does when you get your paycheck. It's a test. They want to know whether you are disciplined enough to look at money. And, and the way it works is that I don't want to get into financial uh, education today. I'm just a pastor. But the bottom line is that they want to look at how much debt is available to you and how much of it are you actually using. So they give you a $10,000 limit. It's not go, go to Walmart and go and buy all the children's clothes that you have been thinking about in your dreams. That's not what they gave you that money for. It's a test. You see, can you have 10000 limit and stay at 1000 Can you do it? Some of you cannot have 1000 in your account. You'll be shaking like this. You'll be shaking like this. You'll be just like, you know what I used to do one time? When I, when I started you know, trying to discipline myself with all this saving and things, you know what I used to do? I used to go to, to FIFA, which is now EA, 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 whatever, FC, whatever, that they call it now. We're waiting, you know, 29th is coming out. Those that know, they know. <laughs> so what I used to do is I would go and give myself a big budget. I would take a small team. Now, I have this massive budget, right, that I can buy Mbappe, buy anybody I like, but I'll keep the money there and be struggling with the team just to teach myself discipline because I can blow the own money and buy everybody, and win all the leagues, and bring everybody, but it doesn't change anything. But I, I, I was doing that over and over again, just to, to teach myself that money can stay in your account. You don't have to spend it. <laughs> it can stay there. But I'm going to show you now. Some of us, you can now, that money that is in your account can now become the God. It can now become the real issue, because money is not, saving money is not just for saving. So that you can look at it and say, oh, like the rich fool, look at what I've done. That's not the purpose of, of saving. So I'll show, I'll show you what the purpose is. Let's just move on a little bit here. Proverbs 22, verse 7. It says, the, root, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. I'm moving on, guys. You need to move with me. Proverbs 22, verse 7. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So this is, this is very important. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Let's keep going here. Please, guys, please, please, please. I cannot stress this thing enough. Don't look. What, what I always say when I'm talking about this issue of, you know, car, house, whatever, the reason why, like I was telling you this morning, why we are, we are living where we are now is because we want to do things at our own pace. That's the only reason. It's not that I cannot be in the neighborhood and be paying twice what I'm paying now, but I, I don't want to put myself in that. There's something in this country called house poor. Do, do you know what it is? Okay, the people that grew up here are nodding. Those of you, let me explain it. So what it means to be house poor is that everything you have is inside your house. Which is that you don't, once you have paid for your house, you can't afford anything. You know that 70% of Canadians cannot afford an extra $100 outside of their paycheck. So what it means is that an emergency of $100 cannot come up in a month. They don't have it. So if the paycheck does not show up when it's supposed to show up, there's going to be a problem. That's not the will of God. You are not within your means. Are you guys awake? Okay. I know you will not be happy, but I have to, I have to tell you these things. I have to tell you. So what you, what you want to do is that sometimes you have to be deliberate about this and you insist that I, I want to stay within. They will tell you that you can have... Uh, uh, I just told you now. They will give you... Uh, they will give you now. What, what do you want? They will give you. But you have to know that, okay... Is, is this going to be, if, if it ever comes up, for instance, that, okay, we want to have an uh, anniversary, overflow offering. As I'm saying it, and you're like, ah, overflow, okay. There's nothing to, even in, in, in a flow, I don't have. <laughs> even the in flow that will, that will pay the bills, <laughs> in flow, I don't have. <laughs> so overflow, ah, please, oh, <laughs> let's leave overflow alone. <laughs> you don't want to be in that space. You don't want to be in that space. So that's what it means to live within your means. So you keep everything that you are, paying out all of those things within what you actually make. 
And the other temptation of this is, this is what we did. Because me, my, my job, right? I told you guys, for like the first one year of this church, all the extra work that I did was just to, to if I one time, the guy who was training me, because he used to see how I used to do my, my budgeting and whatever, because we're sitting down together the whole time. So he would see that everything that is overtime pay is just church, church, church. I was just pumping the money here because that's the reason why I was doing all those extra work. But what we did was, we did not budget our lives based on my extra income. Our lives was within how much I am sure that this one, whatever happens, this one is coming in. That's what you want to do. So you are not planning, you know, you are not, they told you that you are going to get 1,000. Before that 1,000 comes, you have spent 3,000. You have spent 3,000. Why are you waiting for the 1,000? That's not financial wisdom. All right, I'll keep moving. I'm getting into trouble. Some people are already looking at me and frowning at me, so. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Oh, no man, oh, no one, anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So this is what we want to do. Make sure that we are not, we are not indebted. Look, I'm not saying that all debt is bad. That's not what I'm saying. Some people teach that. That's not, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You, you owning a house, for, for example, is not a bad debt. And I'll explain myself. Because you owe that debt, whether you like it or not. That, except you want to live with your parents till you, till you die. But if you are going to live by yourself, you actually do what? Owe that debt. Because you will pay rent somewhere. You will. For the next 30 years, you will be somewhere paying rent. <laughs> so you are better off in this country. I'm not saying hey, wherever you are working from. I don't know how things operate with there. But in this country, you are better off owning what you are paying for. So that whatever happens eventually, you can either choose to sell that, you know, and, and get some equity of that. And you, the profit of that is going to come to you, right? When your house is moved on or whatever it is. But that monthly payment of house, you will be paying it. Ah, Right now, in fact, they were telling us that the, what we are paying for our house now, if we wanted to rent now, now we'll be paying more renting than what we are paying as our mortgage in this country. I'm saying in this country. Yeah, so you have to know these things. So it's not, that's why you see that I don't talk bad about mortgages because whether you like it or not, I'm telling you <laughs> whether you like it or not, that monthly house money, you will be paying it. Whether it is a rent you are paying or you are, so you are better off if something that, this is what I told the, the major and Betty the other time, right? Even if it is something that looks like the apartment you are living in now, just make sure it belongs to you. You don't have to go for anything fancy. If you can afford the fancy, please go for it. Because I want to come and sleep in your house. Okay, there's one testimony in the cooler. I'm still keeping it in the cooler. When the time is ripe, I will, I will unveil the testimony. I want to be, I like fine house. So I'm coming to sleep in your house. But, I'm, but that house must be house you can afford. Yeah, not the one that you bought because, you know, pepper them. Okay, point number three. So we've said you, you need to be saving, but you spend on assets, not liabilities. So this is what you do with savings. Savings is not to keep in one account and be looking at it and be adoring it. It's to, to invest it in assets, not liabilities. Now, some of you are experts in this thing, but some people are, trust me, some people are hearing this thing for the very first time. Believe me. I've gone past the stage of thinking that everybody knows everything. <laughs> so you may have heard it over and over again. Let it be a reminder to you. But know that these principles, especially for people that come into this country, you know, fresh, they don't understand this thing. And it, they will go for, for three, four years, and then they will come. Some, some people will show you their credit card balance. You'll be like, ah, how? Until you go and check price of flights. Then you say, okay, okay, <laughs> that is how. <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, you don't have a house, you don't have a property of your own, you don't have anything you can sell, you know, if things come to it, that you have to get out of this thing, right? You don't have anything like that, but you have gone to, to Singapore, you have gone to Peru, you have gone everywhere, you are taking photo inside the moon. How does that help? How does that help? You get what I'm talking about. How? How does it help? How does it help? There is time for everything. That time will come. You will travel the world, but you will do it because you can afford to. Say amen to that. So, you save another 5 or 10% of your income after your tithe. But don't save just for saving's sake. Don't be like the rich fool. You save to invest. To invest in assets, not liabilities. Now, the difference between assets and liability is very simple. Liability is anything that takes money from you. Without appreciating above the value of the cost. So, a liability is taking money from you. But it's not appreciating above the value of what is costing you to maintain it. That's a liability. E.g. car. You know I love cars. 
But at the same time, I hate them. Because when you go and finance a car, the minute you drive it out of the showroom, in the showroom, it's shining, oh, shining. As you drive it out, just do this experiment. Huh? Go into a showroom, get into a car, and pay. Pay, oh. sign all the papers that they're giving you. You know, they won't, they won't even collect money from you. Zero percent, zero down. Not percent, percent now is like 10%, but zero down. Nothing. They'll tell you you will pay in, in two months' time. Drive that car out of the parking lot huh? and go like and put maybe 20 miles on it. Bring it back to the dealer and tell them, I don't want to get out to sell it to you. You will not collect it for the same amount you sold it to me. The minute you drive it out of the parking lot, the value has gone down. That's a liability. So it's taking more, and that's how people end up in, in what is called negative equity, which is that now you want, to, you want to sell the car, but the car is not worth as much as what you are owing on the car. That's negative equity. The, it's the other way with, with property. That's why I'm always talking about this, because with that, you will, you will end up selling your property for more than what, look, if you sell the property for less than you paid for it, then you overpaid. Yeah, that's what happened. That means that you overpaid for it. But if you buy it at the, at the normal price on what it's supposed to be, it will only appreciate. When we came to this country in, no, to Halifax in 2019, the houses that were selling for 300,000 are now 700,000. It, it baffles me. When I see the, when I see it, it, it baffles. That's why I told my wife, I said, you see this 30 minutes on the highway, I will do it. Because I cannot have heart attack. Do you understand? Now, if you don't know, it's a different thing. But these are houses that we went to and walked into. They were selling 300,000, 400,000. Now it's 800, 700. And I'm like, ah, this same house. Oh boy, I will go where I have backyard, big backyard, big driveway. I don't want to allow. Because I want to walk at my own pace. At my own pace. There's time for everything. That time will come. But if you can afford to do that, please hear me. If you can afford to do that, do it. I'm not, I'm not you know, saying, oh, you, you know, everybody now, don't be a suspect now of uh, a big house detector. Oh, yeah, now detecting everybody's house. <laughs> Don't be a big house detector. I'm just saying that make sure it's what you can afford to do that you are doing. That's the whole bottom line of it. All right? Glory to God. All right. It takes discipline. Final thoughts. It takes discipline to multiply money. It takes discipline. Everything is all about discipline. Everything. Everything. It's a test. Everything is a test. When your paycheck comes in, it's a test that God is giving you. He wants to know what is the first thing you are going to do with this. Are you going to put me first in this thing? Then he wants to know, are you going to be able to live within your means? God is interested in that. It means you are a faithful steward. Yeah, that, that when you, if you have to, you know, like don't be like the, 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 the prophet that had Bible school, that one of the students of his Bible school, they came to collect his children after they, they died. I'm saying it in a way you don't understand. You know, you know what I'm talking about. They said the sons of the prophet, they came. After the prophet died, they said, this man is owing us money. You don't want to be that way. No, you don't want to be that way. All right? So this is very important. It takes discipline and we have to have that discipline. And if we don't have it, you need to talk to God about it. So I want us to bow our heads and just give God a moment to make this message personal to you. Talk to God and ask him. This, I, I know some things I said today might have hit you in a, in a very hard way, but I'm saying it out of love. I need you to hear me from a heart of love. I want to see you prosper and do well in this land. So talk to God and say, Father, where, what is my own correction in this? What is my own correction? What do I need to change? What do I need to change? How can I be better? How can I be better? I know that your plans for me are taught to plans of good and not of evil to give me a future and a hope. Help me to be patient, to be patient for that hope. And that in the right time, in the right time, in the right way, that you will give me all that my heart desires in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray over every one of you that are under the sound of my voice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you that are trusting God for better jobs, better assignments, like we call them here, in the name that is above every other name that will help you to be able to afford the, the necessary things in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that over you right now. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, the Lord is going to open your eyes to see opportunities for trade, for business, to, to move things around, to sell things, to be handy and do things, and, and to be able to pay off all your debts in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare over you, debt will not hold you down in this country. In the name that is above every other name. You will not be the, 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 the servant. You are not the tail. You are the head only. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of you that are under the sound of my voice. And you are saying in your heart that you would love to tithe. But actually things are really, really tight. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray over you as you take that step of obedience and put God first in your finances, He will open up new doors unto you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. He will open up fresh doors, fresh opportunities, and take you to places in the name of Jesus where you have only imagined in the past. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. All right.